Well, I basically started training horses for the public when I was about 16. Mm -hmm. And I started out riding English, um, doing everything from um, jumping, starting colts at the racetrack, a little bit of eventing. And then the first time I sat on a cutting horse, I was hooked. That was in Australia where I actually began my horse career. And then I came over here in 81 and trained snaffle bit and stock horses for four years and then got into the cutting full time. Um, I ended up training cutting horses on a national level for competition for probably about 17 years. And I kind of hit burnout in my career. Um, I did, I had a world championship title under my belt and was also instrumental in world championship titles for two of our clients um, and had a really good career, had some just magical horses. Um, but when, when I hit the end of that career in 2000, I think what I wanted to do, I started looking to have a different kind of relationship with my horses. And I came across Carolyn's book in the website and it just kind of jumped out at me and I realized I had to read it. And so I read the book and was absolutely fascinated with it. And at the end of the book, I just knew I had to meet her. And I've never done anything like that before, but I just knew I had to meet her. So there was a phone number in the back and I called her up and I had no idea what I was gonna say. Um, other than I just had to meet you. We ended up talking for about three hours on the phone. It was really fun. And it turned out she lived in Escondido, which was only about 45 minutes away from me at the time. When, when I first met Carolyn, I, di I didn't have any horses. Um, I was just going over to her place and she was working with me with her horses that she had there, but I didn't have any of my own to work with. Um, Lisa, my best friend, came into the picture and said she was going to bring a stallion back from Spain. Um, and she thought she had a trainer for the horse at the time, only to find out that on the way home from the trip, the trainer told her she was leaving to go back to Minnesota. So I told Lisa I could help her put the basics on the horse, but when she decided what direction she wanted the horse to go, I'd help her find a, a good trainer for it. And um, then when we got the horse here, I realized what a perfect opportunity um, to, to get this horse over to Carolyn's and, and for he and I to begin, you know, our, our training in earnest, if you will. <laughs> so it was just the timing was, was per perfect. And um, he just turned out to be such a magical horse. And, and with Carolyn's training and his personality, it's just been the trip of a lifetime for me. Well, I think what I enjoyed the most was watching her work with him, especially in the beginning stages, and watching him try to figure things out. I mean, you could literally see the wheels turning in his head. And it just, I loved watching that. That was my favorite time of being there, is just watching that interaction and, and, and watching him try to figure things out. Now, certainly with the horses that, that I'm working with, I mean, it's just such a delight that you, when you pull into the driveway or they first see you, a Panadero especially comes galloping over to the fence with a whinny, you know, and that's just, it just makes it all the much better to be there because, you know, they're looking forward to what's, what's coming. And uh, it's, it's, it's like having another best friend. It's really fun.